Well, fifth and sixth grade social studies, we meet again. It is Mr. Pedigo here, the Teacher's Lounge, St. Michael Catholic School. We've got business to attend to. I'll tell you what it is. We've spent the last couple of weeks addressing and going over the significance of the United States Constitution, okay? We've got a firm grip on the three branches of government. We know why they're there, and we know what they do. The next order of business is the Bill of Rights. And you're to watch this video, and we're going to come in on Thursday, and we're going to discuss the heck out of it, and we're going to do a small project based upon what we talk about in this video. Bill of Rights. What is it? Why is it important? Where did it come from? Now, before we address these questions, we got to remember two groups of people, okay? There are the Federalists, and there are the Anti-Federalists. Okay, so first of all, what's a Federalist? Federalists were people who were in favor of a, you know, a stronger central government, a federal system, because they thought that we couldn't um, secure um, treaties, trade deals, etc. We couldn't function as a healthy, independent nation without having a federal government, right? Now, the Anti-Federalists, classic example, your boy, Patrick Henry, give me liberty or give me death. Remember, these people broke away from, from England, right? They were really very concerned with their individual liberties being taken away. And they're like, listen, if we're going to make a government, dude, we got to make sure that our individual liberties and rights as human beings are kept, preserved, okay? And this is how this relates to the Bill of Rights. So, Constitutional Convention, right? We're going over, we're picking apart the Constitution. We're saying, well, what do we like about it? What don't we like about it? Now, we also need to understand what an amendment is. Now, an amendment, okay? An amendment is something that, that is changed, is, is, a, is a change or addition designed to improve a, a document, a piece of legislation, etc. Okay? So you have these anti-federalists at the Constitutional Convention. They're like, listen, I'm vibing with you, but... In order to ratify this, to approve it and put it into place, we need to make some changes to improve it. We need to make some amendments to it, okay? Now, the guy who's at the forefront of this is none other than the fourth president of the United States, James Madison, okay? Now, James Madison's like, listen, listen, check this out. we got to put some amendments in here that are going to preserve our rights because guess what? James Madison... He's an anti-federalist, like Patrick Henry. And so they know that there's going to be a new government put in place through the Constitution, but Madison and these anti-federalists are like, listen, if we're going to help you pass this, if we're going to help approve and ratify this, then first, we got to make sure that our freedoms are protected through amendments, okay? Now, there's a lot of amendments to the United States Constitution. It can be amended, still being amended. But... The Bill of Rights, write this down, make a mental note of it, or write it on an index card. The Bill of Rights is the first 10 amendments to the United States Constitution. Okay? Now check this out. The Bill of Rights. We need to get a grip on why this is important. Why are the Why do we look at these first 10 amendments and like this is important to us? We need to get it. I want you guys to be contemplating this. So to recap, so far, Constitutional Convention, the Anti-Federalists see that a federal government, which we are now very well versed in the understanding of, for studying the Constitution, we get it. So that's our government. Now, the Anti-Federalists say we want to protect our individual rights under this government. The way they do that is they make, they say, we're going to put amendments. That's minor changes to improve something. The first 10 of these amendments to the Constitution are the Bill of Rights. Get into them. We're going to get them to them really quick, okay? Number one, freedom of speech. You see how freedom of speech is, uh, is pretty darn, pretty darn important, okay? If, you know, what you're allowed to say, if what you're allowed to say as a human being, is compromised, and there's like a if there's a governor put on that, that's that's limiting your individual rights as a human being. And also, the anti-federalists were interested in making sure that that's a protected freedom because we got to be able to say things about our government, right? You can get in so much trouble back in the times of when we were colonies, you know, speaking out against the British government. Man, think about North Korea right now, man. 
you can't be like on Twitter, you know, in North Korea, like, you know, man, Kim Jong-un is not my favorite. No. So Bill of Rights, it's important. Number one, freedom of speech, protected. Number two, well-regulated militia and the right to bear arms shall not be infringed upon. Infringed means, you know, um, hampered, changed, tried to stifle something. So your, your right to bear arms, right to have guns and own guns, that sort of thing, um, that shouldn't be unjustly held back. Okay, number three, no unlawful forced quartering of soldiers. Dude, check this out. When we're studying the American Revolution, remember there were British soldiers coming in sleeping in people's houses. They're taking, the, you know, using their stuff, their foods and stuff. That's not cool. You can't do that. The unlawful forced quartering, quartering being staying at a place. Nah, -uh. no, not going to fly. Okay. Number, number four. Ah, there is an un unlawful seizure in searches. Now, seizure means to take something. Because you can't just have some government official come up to, you know, um, to come and say, give me, I'm taking your cell phone for no apparent reason or something like that. That's a silly example. But unlawful searches, searches that aren't based in something, like if you don't have a, you know, a good reason to be doing that, a lawful reason to be searching or seizing people's property, that's, um, uh, we want to make sure that right's protected, right? Okay, number five, right to due process, okay? What is due process, Mr. Pedigo? Well, check this out. Due process is, you know, due process is, we're talking about the legal system. The people who have been studying the judicial branch of the government might have encountered this, okay? So we have certain rights that are owed to us, right? We have certain legal rights, okay? Due process, um, hmm, how can I explain this in a good way for you guys? Due process. The state has to respect legal rights that are owed to a person, right? They protect an individual person, okay? When somebody does something, when the government does something, if they don't follow a process, and, you know, either if it's, um, you know, uh, even if it's like, you know, something, oh, I'm losing my train of thought, get it back, get it back. There's a certain course of action, a legal course of action that is in line with people's freedoms. There's a, there's a legal, there's a way you do things. There's a way you do things in our government and in our state governments and in our local governments, and that right needs to be protected. So if you're going to be taken to court, there has to, you have to go about that in the legal way. You're, that's a process, and it's a process that's due to you. You do it. You're owed it. Okay, and that should not be infringed upon. Sorry, I'm back on it. Don't worry, I got you, I got you guys. Number six, right to the accused to a speedy trial. Listen, you can't just go, you know, arrest somebody and say, we're going to try in yeah, 10 years. We're going to try you in 10 years. And so you can't just be rotting away in a prison cell for 10 years. You have, there, It kind of goes back to due process. There's a certain legal way that we do things in America. And we do things in our state and local governments, in our federal governments. So six, speedy try. You can't just lie, you know arrest somebody and say we're going to try you um, in, in ten years. That would be not fun. No. Number seven, right of a trial by a jury of your peers. Okay. So you can't like just have you know you know how people talk. Your parents maybe say like oh man I got called in for jury duty. Not fun. Hashtag not fun. And that means that your your peers are people who are you know in your um, group in your circle, your social circle, etc. You get to be uh, tried by people who are actually citizens and not a bunch of people who are loaded jury. Blah, blah, blah. Okay. Um, number eight, no excessive bail or cruel and unusual punishment. That kind of speaks for itself. You can't like, you know, we can't go and hang somebody for, you know, robbing a candy store or something like that. Um, number nine, rights listed should not disparage all other rights. That means that, check this out, if we don't have rights listed in the Constitution, that doesn't mean we don't have them. That means that they're not, even if they're not listed, you can't say, well, you don't have the right to own a, the, the Constitution doesn't say anything about owning a car or owning a scooter. So um, that's not one of your rights. No, of course not. That's silly, right? Thanks, James Madison. Number 10, powers not delegated by the Constitution are reserved to the states or to the people. That means if the Constitution doesn't give certain rights to the federal government, those rights are going to the, the people, the states, etc. We're going to go over this in class. Think about these 10 
these Ten Amendments. Think about what an amendment is. Think about why James Madison and this group of anti-federalists felt that these were like the crucial ones to have, right? Think about it. We'll talk about it in the class.